Jackson Dart's recruiting may have found the quarterback of the defense when it comes to Pooh Paul. We'll tell you about it in just a second. You are locked on Ole Miss. Your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hi, I'm Stephen Willis, a former staff member at Ole Miss and a 10-year veteran member of the national media with Yahoo Sports. Also did a little time at WSMB in Nashville as well. Today on the show, we talk about how Ole Miss is finally finding that linebacker quarterback of the defense in Pooh Paul. And we talk about what we mean that will mean for the front seven. John Saunders is in a scratching claw fight to keep his position as the fifth defensive back. And I think he actually has a real shot of keeping that spot. Also, Pooh Paul confirmed that like Prince Liam on me, Ellen, Jackson Dart was heavily involved in his recruitment, proving yet again that Dart's potential status this fall is off the charts. And also a Kylan Deer was at practice yesterday. That's good news as well. This is the Locked On Ole Miss podcast, your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're free and available on all the podcast apps and on YouTube. Thanks again for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen every day. And a special hello to the everydayers who make the show what it is. This episode is brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little bit further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Taste the Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Check them all out today at NissanUSA.com. All right, so it is really interesting. The One of the interviews that was coming in post-practice yesterday was um, Pooh Paul. It's Chris Paul, but he prefers to go by Pooh. And he is a player that has a chance to take this defense from good to great. The defense a year ago was the middle of the pack. The scoring defense was actually pretty good. They only gave up about 21, 22 points a game. And with this offense, it was more than adequate. That's the reason they won 11 games, some of which by their defense. But even last year, they didn't necessarily have the players at linebacker to play the defense the way it was meant to be played. Certain teams were able to take advantage of Ole Miss physically and size-wise, looking at you, Georgia Bulldogs. But Jeremiah Jean-Baptiste did the best he could. Ashanti Seastrunk, God God bless him, did the best he could. But linebackers were not a strength in last year's defense in those two positions. So Ole Miss went out in the transfer portal and over the last couple of years in the transfer portal and has done a good job of trying to beef up and build up that linebacker room, and they may have really hit on a linebacker in Poopal. This is a player that is coming from the Arkansas Razorbacks to where he honestly had a pretty good year. He had 74 tackles, um, 6.5 tackles for loss, two sacks, one quarterback hurry. For the linebacker, he was a butt kiss watch list player. He was a quarterback of that Arkansas defense that, for the most part, was pretty good. Now, offensively, they were pretty terrible a year ago, but defensively, they were pretty good. Chris Paul was a major portion of that. And his stats went up after 60 something tackles as a sophomore. And you can see him working up importance now he at the end of this year through maybe stuff that happened up there because he was a starter that transferred that he wasn't unhappy maybe promises were made that they didn't come through on I'm not here to litigate that the fact of the matter is he moved down to Ole Miss and it looks like he is penciling himself in to be a leader of this defense. And he said whenever he got to Ole Miss, it was his intention to be a leader of this defense. And he can do it. He has the athletic athletic ability and speed to go sideline to sideline and at a great level. He's got the size at 235 pounds 
to be a plus thumper, a, Jer a plus Jeremiah Jean Batiste. All the stuff that he gave Ole Miss a year ago, now you're getting an upgrade at that as well. And this defense, it's a little bit different. Um, I talked with Brian Smith on a video that's going to be available Sunday night about how this defense is a little bit different and how they move people around. And when you have Suntaran Perkins or TJ Dudley also working out on the defensive line some, because when the defense calls for that to happen, they need to understand that position. They can't just all be lining up and playing stand-up linebacker. I talked about Raymond Collins, the junior college signee that Ole Miss had that was the number one linebacker in the country out of JUCO. You had a situation a few, just a few years ago, like six years ago, to where JUCO was that quick fix place before the transfer portal became a thing. So players are coming in, and Pete Golding is making this defense his own. Because remember, in 2023, he came in in January. That was basically the end of that portal window. And then he had 15 days in April, and they were able to sign a bunch of players that made the defense actually pretty good. But it was guys where they were able to recruit G5-type players. Pupal's an SEC-type player. The players on the back end of the defense, like Key Lawrence, Lewis Moore, those are SEC, G, Power 5 level programs. You look at Trey Amos. You look at Amorium Walker. Power 5 level type programs. And you can see that Ole Miss is building on all this experience. They, they, were, they were like, hey, we were pretty good a year ago. How do we get even better? And the way we do it is by getting speed power ratio guys that can play at the Power 5 level. So LSU, Georgia, Texas A&M, they can't just out-athlete you. You become a much more um, interesting, hard-to-break-down unit defensively. And this is the important part that I think everybody needs to realize. There was no quarterback, really, of the defense a year ago. Maybe Trey Washington. But he wasn't really that guy. That was a defensive line-led unit a year ago. Now, the defensive line is still going to be good, but they're not going to be having to lead. Pupal can take over that as well. Like I said, he was a Butkus watch list player at Arkansas. He's somebody that I'm expecting to get up over 100 tackles. And knowing what I know about how this defense is going to be constructed, I can tell you that I, I can bet that with Zach Arnett being the linebacker whisperer, he's going to be able to get the most out of Chris Paul. Now, just throwing this in, this is another thing that we learned during the week, and but I just want to point this out um, before I forget. They're getting ready to vote on the fact that you're just going to have 11 recruiters instead of um, all of your coaches, on-the-field coaches, having to be recruiters. You've had recruiters on staff for as long as I can remember, probably since as long as there's been college sports. But now you don't have a situation to where you're going on the staff finding that recruiter because your personnel department can find that guy and he can just go out and recruit superbly. You have a situation at Ole Miss where you might be able to take some guys off the off the field, recruiting, maybe coordinators, you know, something like that, and replace them with, say, Kelvin Bolden going out and Ricky Davis going out. Um, that'll be interesting to see how that looks if it gets passed. It looks like it's going to get passed, but if it gets passed, what is that going to look like? And it should be interesting to see what, what is normally an analyst role to where you don't have to put up with all the recruiting stuff. Now they can be an on-field role as well. I mean, you have a situation where these large staffs um, and these large SEC level staffs, you're, you're going to have just a massive undertaking um, in the front office. I guess the front office is the best way to put that. But Chris Paul, 
coming in as a quarterback of the defense, somebody that is going to be the leader of that defense, somebody that was recruited by Jackson Dart, specifically like Prince Liam on Mielin. We're going to talk about that in the next segment or the third segment as well. But Pooh Paul coming in playing linebacker, being able to direct Walter Nolan, J.J. Pekees, Jared Ivey, somebody like Kamarian Franklin, Prince Liam on Mielin, D.J. Holmes, if he takes a step. I think Chamberlain Campbell is another defensive end that we need to at least pay attention to. He's a year two freshman at this point. It'll be really interesting to see on the defensive line how they go and how they deploy like Suntaran Perkins and TJ Dudley. Just more real questions. But the main thing, because of all this mixing and moving, there needs to be a leader develop on that side of the ball. Now, the leader of the team is Jackson Dart. This is Jackson Dart's team. But that unit needs to have a leader as well, and I think Poupal has a chance to be that leader as well. We'll see exactly how it goes, but it's looking really good for Chris Paul and or Poupal and that defensive side of the ball. Thanks again for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen of the day. You know, it isn't all newcomers this year, and this player is going to make it hard for those newcomers to even get on the field. We'll tell you about that in just a second. This episode is brought to you by the spring cleaning champions, Manscaped. This season, make sure to groom your carpets and the drapes with the leaders of below-the-waist grooming. Clear out that winter bush with Manscaped, Lawnmower 5.0, and watch your confidence bloom like the springtime flowers. Embrace the season and join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with our special offer. Go to manscaped.com and use code locked on, L O C K E D O N, all one word, for $20 off and free shipping. You can't beat that. Spring cleaning doesn't just apply to your nether regions, though. Get the full grooming experience with Manscaped's signature Beard Hedger Pro Kit Plus, Handyman Electric Face Shaver. Get $20 off and free shipping with the code locked on, L O C K E D. O-N at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code locked on at manscaped.com. Nothing quite like a little spring cleaning in your pants. If you're going to the pants party, I guess that would make sense. Better Together is the first cooperative daily fantasy application. They offer contests. You can go on there and shoot up the leader le- leaderboards. And they offer familiar experiences to existing DFS. So it's not different. Totally. With a social twist, meaning you can play with a friend slash teammate, it provides a sense of camaraderie and enhances the social experience of watching sports. It makes you realize that DFS is fun alone, but like other things, it's better when it's done with friends. It shows that synergy from working together that gives you a better chance of winning than going alone. The team, the team, the team. That's, that's how you win at this experience. And this creates a shared experience, splitting contest entries, and it gives the feeling of being connected even when you're apart. Is your bracket already busted? Are you tired of the same old fantasy grind where you make a gross roster, cross your fingers, and hope for the best? Or maybe you're losing on that last leg of your pick entry. Introducing Better Together, the first cooperative daily fantasy platform where Teamwork triumphs talent, and you can play with your friends instead of against them. Pick more or less on real-time player stats, strategize with your partner to boost your odds, and climb up that leaderboard together. So grab a friend and join the social DFS movement. Download Better Together now from the App Store and sign up using promo code Locked On for your chance to win your share of over $1,000 in cash prizes. But remember the code, locked on, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, all one word, because winning alone is fun, but it's better together. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports Today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for your every day to bring you the biggest stories without all of that screaming. 
Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or Locked On Amazon Fire TV channels. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every single day. So it's really interesting that John Saunders is a player that kind of gets forgotten by Ole Miss fans. And this is a player that was so important to that Ole Miss team a year ago. Um, he actually had a game-saving interception from like the one-yard line against Texas A&M in a game where if Texas A&M scored, Texas A&M probably wins that game. Ole Miss is in the Peach Bowl, and the season looks entirely different. John Saunders did that. John Saunders, I believe, was an all-conference level player by the end of the year. And he has played that position, that fifth defensive back position. He is a guy that a year ago ended up with 39 tackles, had three interceptions, had four passes defended. He had a pick against Arkansas that was pretty big. And he also had that one I just mentioned about um, against Texas A&M. John Saunders is a guy that is poised to break out as a, I don't know, should you call him a plus senior? I'm, I'm not sure about that, but he's a guy in his last year of eligibility that has a chance to really break out. And yes, I understand that Ole Miss has brought in Lewis Moore, Key Lawrence, Yam Banks, Amorium Walker, Trey Amos. You have returners like Trey Washington. I get all of that. But this is another thing that you need to realize. The returning player coming back, yes, he played for West Neighbors a year ago as that fifth defensive back. But as a safety, Brian Brown is now kind of running those defensive backs. And the first thing that Brian Brown did was set it up to where the defensive backs all met together, both safeties and cornerbacks, so they can understand how each other is being coached. I'm telling you, Brian Brown has a reputation across the country as being a ball hawk. He is a guy that is not to be trifled with on the back end of a defense. And part of that is because of the synergy, synergy that they create between the safeties and the cornerbacks. When you look at a Lewis Moore, who is a guy that I think has a chance to be a Dejon Anthony or a Key Lawrence, which has gotten some rave reviews um, early on in spring practice, you have to figure that those three safety positions, there's got to be at least a little bit of a plan for competition. John Saunders, is he competing with Yam Banks? Is he competing with Lewis Moore? That fifth defensive back position, Jaden Kennedy from Tulane, who transferred a year ago, is in that position as well. It's a situation, though, I don't know if it matters. I know that John Saunders is going to give absolutely everything he can to that position. I think he's going to succeed because when you talk, when he talks, you notice the confidence. You hear it in his voice. He is not attacking this in a situation where he's trying to hold on to a job. In his mind, he's attacking this in a way that he's just going to win the job. And as we saw a year ago with Jackson Dart, that was kind of a a good mindset to have. And it pushed him to just competing, to creating something completely different. And Jackson Dart has a chance to be the greatest quarterback that's ever played at Ole Miss. Um, but I'm not saying John Saunders is going to get there, but there's a little bit of observations that you can make if you're in a position battle. Because competition is the number one rule of this team. It is. And I, I, I don't know if they named practices, but Ed Orgeron, when he was at Ole Miss, and I was at Ole Miss with Ed Orgeron on staff, they both came from the Pete, Col Pete Carroll system. And Tuesday was Competition Tuesday. Big deal. They were going to do a heavy on one-on-ones. They were going to figure out a way to make pass rush and look a little bit harder. Um, on the back end of the defense, they were even going to script it to make to where the best and the best were going against each other. Competition ruled everything. Lane Kiffin is also a Pete Carroll disciple, which means he believes in competition as well. 
So whenever you bring in a Yam Banks, whenever you bring in a Lewis Moore, whenever you bring in a Key Lawrence, all it is is for existing competition for Trey Washington and John Saunders. It's not a situation where those players were brought in, they were going to play. It was just going to be given to them. No, they were going to make John Saunders and Trey Washington compete even harder for the right to play football. And at the end of the day, the football team's going to be better for it. I think that John Saunders has a good chance of holding off all of the uh, challengers for that fifth defensive back position, including Jaden Kennedy, by the way. I think John Saunders is a long defender and he has a lot of traits that are, that are good. Now, I don't know how he runs. I know that he played at Miami of Ohio, who played on the outside. He moved on the inside to Ole Miss, and Pete Golding does that if they don't run necessarily that well. But that's fine. He can be a slot corner. You can make millions of dollars in the NFL playing a slot corner. But John Saunders holding off Lewis Moore, Key Lawrence, Yam Banks, those guys, that's going to be a big step. And John Saunders taking part in the press conference yesterday tells me that he's probably having a pretty good camp because here's a little inside baseball on these press conferences. They don't send people into those things that aren't things aren't going well for because they want people to say the right things to, to keep things around the company line. They send safe people into those press conferences, which means whoever goes into those press conferences is performing pretty well. If you see a Chris Paul, Pooh Paul, if you see a John Saunders and a Jeremy James, by the way, Jeremy James in there, and he's playing all along the line, they're Swiss Army knifing him because he can. But him going into that press conference is because he's safe to go into those press conferences. Pretty excited stuff. I think John Saunders, at the end of the day, has a chance to be the starting slot corner in Ole Miss's defense. So we'll see exactly what happens. Still more to come on Locked On Ole Miss, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Another day and another transfer that Jackson Dart has had a massive influence on bringing from the portal. I think that means something. This week, March Madness's bracket highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking a team that stands out, a team that has pushed it further than the rest. Just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. The NC State Wolfpack are obviously this week's Nissan Rogue. The team absolutely surprised us all with a powerful performance in their first two games of the tournament. Wins over Texas Tech and Oakland have set them up to play Marquette in the Sweet 16. They say win life, go rogue, and that's exactly what the Wolfpack have done here. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Thanks for making Locked On Ole Miss your first listen of the day, and shout out to the everydayers. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube and in the Amazon Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows that cover every single league. Find Locked On Sports Today, now available in the free Fire TV channels app. Be part of history. Now, we talked about Pooh Paul and everything that's going on with him, but in his press conference, he talked about how he was recruited, and he was the player that started everything. There is no last dance without Chris Paul. There is none. There is no last dance without him quickly pulling the trigger and coming down there. Such a good linebacker. At that point, he was the number one linebacker on the board. Getting him to Oxford was a major, major step. I don't think you get Walter Nolan or Prince Liam Ami Ellen if you don't get Poopal. But he mentioned that he was recruited by Jackson Dart, much in the same way as Prince Liam Ami Ellen. Michael Katz from the Tupelo Daily Journal says 
you'll be surprised to know that one of the first people who reached out to Chris Paul when he got in the portal was Jackson Dart. He says they bonded over Fortnite. He also says he's better at Fortnite than Dart, which everybody thinks they're better than everybody else when it comes to video games. That I'm, I'm not overly surprised about that. But Jackson Dart has made his recruiting hall in December just stand out above everything. We are in a situation right now. We are a home playoff game. And I've said this like three times this week because I mean it. We are a home playoff game from Jackson Dart being the greatest of all time to play at Ole Miss. Not best quarterback, not best anything. I'm talking about all sports. The greatest of all time at Ole Miss. A home playoff game away from doing that. This That will be him having the most wins of any Ole Miss um, player ever. That's pretty cool. That is going to be him taking ownership of this team. Everybody is going to know that Jackson Dart recruited all these players when they're making plays. Everybody's going to know that. The mania that is going to build up over the next several months is going to be absolutely nuts. I've, I've described it as Beatles mania. And I think that is, it's interesting, right? And also Jackson Dart, I just want to point this out. When everybody was freaking out about Jackson Dart going pro or going everybody, he was recruiting Chris Paul, he was recruiting Princely and Mommy Allen. I guarantee you we hear he recruited Walter Nolan and we saw the picture of him recruiting Juice Wells. This is Jackson's team. The last dance is Jackson's last dance. And he has assembled his own LeBron-esque super team. Now, you still have to win games, but they're in a better shape to handle that than they have in a long time. So we'll see exactly how that goes. I'm pretty fired up about what Jackson Dart can be after this season. Jackson Dart is getting very, very close from getting a statue. Jackson Dart is getting very, very close from being the guy that is thought of whenever you think of Ole Miss football, and that's absolutely nuts. Before we get out of here, I do want to let you know that at practice yesterday, Kylan Deer was on campus. He's running back out of Quitman, Mississippi. He's potentially the top running back in the country, and I talked to Brian Smith about it this weekend, and he he even mentioned he was the top running back in the country, and him, he's going to, Ole Miss is going to make it very hard for a Kylan Deer to go elsewhere. I'll put it to you like that. And a Kylan Deer has been on campus probably three or four times since the beginning of the year. He's probably going to come back and take an official visit as well. And I'm sure that Ole Miss is going to try and get him up for a ball game, especially that Georgia game. Circle that Georgia game, and that'll let you know exactly where their mind is as well. So. I hope everybody has a great weekend, and thanks for making Locked On Ole Miss your first listen. Every day as we have Bill Flowers joining our, joining our normal beat writers this week to talk about spring football. But for your second listen, Locked On has launched the first-ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows that cover every single league. Find Locked On Sports Today, now available on the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. And for those of you on YouTube, we'll send you there right now. Hotty toddy, everyone.